So first, let's figure out how to determine the thrust generated by a jet engine. To do this, we'll use the integral momentum theorem. So now in fluids, you learn to apply the momentum equation to a control volume, and we did that a little bit earlier in this course in our review as well. And in doing so, you're able to determine the forces that act on that control volume. We're going to do the same thing here to determine the thrust that's produced by a jet engine. So recall that, say, in the x direction, steady flow and steady movement of the control volume Then the sum of forces in the x direction is the integral over the surface of the x velocity times the density times the velocity dot with the normal over the surface. So if I illustrate this here. We've got a generic control volume moving. at u naught there's an incoming velocity u and density rho and this is the velocity in the control volume's frame of reference so the velocity relative to the control volume here's a normal vector and there's the net force acting on the control volume. And S is the surface of the control volume. Okay. Then First of all, it's important to note that Fx might be composed of multiple components. So there may be skin friction, pressure forces, and body forces that contribute to this net force Fx. Now, let's apply this to an aircraft engine that's hanging from a wing, like on a conventional commercial aircraft. All right, we're going to draw a big picture here. So we have a large control volume. Inside the control volume is our engine. And here's the pylon which connects the engine to the rest of the aircraft. Since we're cutting through the pylon here is where we get the x force f x and this is the thrust f minus the drag d. On the outside of the control volume far away from the engine we have pressure p naught p naught this is the control volume. Far upstream we have a uniform incoming velocity u naught at pressure p naught and there'll be a capture stream tube which divides the flow which goes into the engine and the flow which bypasses the engine. This contains m dot naught and upstream has area ai. At the downstream side of the control volume, we've got PR 
AR, where R is for remainder. This is everything except for the engine exhaust. And there we have velocity U naught. In the exhaust stream, in an idealized sense, we have UE exhaust, M dot E mass flow exhaust, and PE pressure exhaust. Now let's stick a coordinate system XY on here. Okay, so now we've got this picture of the control volume containing a jet engine. We want to apply our conservation laws to this control volume. Uh, just to clarify, AR is the, oops, forgot something, AE is this area here. And AR is the rest of the area not taken up by AE. So then if we write Mirror over the surface of row ux u dot n dA equals f minus d plus what else is acting on the surface of the control volume? Some of the pressure forces. Here there are no skin friction forces to be considered on the surface of the control volume. So the right hand side of this equation we can write as force minus drag plus, and if we sum all these pressure forces over the sides, we get minus PEAE, because the force is acting in, plus P naught AE at the opposite end, minus the sum over the remaining area, PR minus P naught times DAR. And the left hand side is rho E, UE, AE times UE. And this though is just M dot E. And that's what's leaving, and what's going in is rho naught, U naught, A naught times U naught. So again, this is m dot coming in, plus the integral of rho ux u dot n dA over s minus ae minus a naught. So basically all of the area except for the exhaust and the inlet area. Let's clean it. Okay. Now we have the two sides of this equation, and we can start working this out and manipulating it. So if we start looking at the right hand side, if we write force minus drag, or thrust minus drag minus P minus P naught times AE, simplifying these terms minus the sum over integral over the area p sub r minus p naught e a r and then we can think that this is a term related to the flow that passes through the engine and this is a term related to the flow that goes outside the engine and then relating that to the other side of the equation we get again m dot E U E minus M dot not U naught plus the integral over S minus A E minus A naught rho U X U dot N D A. And again we can divide this into two parts the way to the flow that goes through the inside of the engine and the part that passes outside. Now, thrust is our focus here. 
conventionally, this relates to the flow inside. The rest, by definition, is drag. So we can actually neatly divide these inside and outside terms up between the thrust and drag. So therefore we can say that the thrust is m dot e u e minus m dot o u o plus p e minus p naught times a e. So what this tells us is that thrust can be divided into two parts. First is the change in momentum. of the flow entering and leaving the engine. And this is the major component of the thrust. So this is m dot e u e minus m dot naught u naught. And then the second part is the difference in pressure. Between the inlet and exit. Usually this is small. This is the PE minus P naught times AE term.